Um, okay. So an official warm welcome to you all from, all, you know, I'm here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I'm Nadia Colburn. I see many faces that I recognize and many that are new to me. So um, welcome. And if you're later watching the recording, welcome to you too. Let this time be a time for you. Um, I'll be leading you through some practices and um, really just preparing you for this whole new year that we have ahead of us so that you can meet it as your fullest self, uh, your fullest creative self, uh, your fullest writing self. And um, the more we set intentions for ourselves, the more you know, mindfully we can live the way we want to live. So um, I will lead you as I like to do through a short meditation first to get us really started and grounded and present together. Uh, I'm going to do that again so it's quiet in the background. So take a nice deep breath. Maybe actually before I do it again, just shake out a little bit. Move your arms, shake your arms out, get comfortable. If you, even if you want to stand up, you can do that. <sighs> Giving your nervous system a reminder. Here we are, we're alive, we're safe in this moment, and we're present. So. And I invite you to bring the mind to the breath as a way to bring mind and body together and just notice the breath coming in and leaving the body. Try to get out of judgment mind, noticing if you're uncomfortable, let yourself be uncomfortable. If you're comfortable, be comfortable. Just notice without reaction. If the mind wanders, bring it back to the breath. Breathe down into the belly. Signaling to the nervous system that it's okay to let go. And welcome, welcome, welcome. So it is full moon today, the wolf moon. It's new year. Also happens to be epiphany, which I love just that even concept of epiphany. Um, and it's really great to be with you. So um, as I'm talking to you, just try to, throughout this whole time that we have together, try to stay connected to your body and to your breath, just opening the ears. And we're going to be practicing with kind of coming out of that judgment mind and into more um, integrated way of being in mind and body. So I absolutely believe that um, all of us need practices to reset um, our own alignment so that we can work more with our natural flow instead of against it. Um, work with, with our energy and our natural rhythms instead of against that. And so I want to give you techniques to do that. And the upcoming Mindful Writing Challenge will be a process to lead you through a new practice for the new year. Maybe you've done it with me before. These recordings are specifically for the new year. Maybe you don't even want to do the Mindful Writing Challenge. That's fine. I'll tell you more about it later. But we can have practices that will help us um, write in more aligned ways. And 
In terms of setting intentions for our writing, often when we set intentions, what we're doing is we're thinking about the future. And then when we're thinking about the future, notice we're thinking about the future because our body, of course, can't be in the future. Our body can only be right here, right now. So many of our intentions, our goal settings, our thinking about the future are inherently disconnected from the body. And what I want to do is set an intent, set intentions with you that are coming from a more integrated place where we're in the body already. So my first question for you is going to be present oriented because anything that is going to come in the future has to come from what we already have in the present. So imagine even like a little, you know, a majestic oak tree comes from that acorn that's planted into the ground, all that potential that's in that nut. So I'm going to lead you through a very um, short meditation again, and then right into a little writing exercise that you can do. And again, just listen to me, get some pen and paper. If you want to write by hand, that can be nice instead of writing on the computer, or you can write on the computer if you want. And um, just lead you through a short meditation again. So this time we're gonna breathe in for a count of four and then breathe out for a count of eight and go at a pace that's comfortable for you. And now stay connected to your breath and just listen to my invitation. So someone once told me, if you don't love the place that you're living in now, you're never going to love any home that you have in the future. And this resonated with me because at the time I was living in a place that I wasn't very happy with. And I was trying to figure out how that could be possible. And I realize that our home is not just our physical home, but it's our body and it's our present. And so we have to live from the present. And the same can be true of our writing life. So what I want to invite you to do is to invite you to write about what it is about your own writing life, what kernels of potential do you have right now to have a fulfilling, exciting, deep, expressive writing life? And maybe you haven't even written in 40 years. That's okay, because we all use language every day. We're all aware of what's around us. We're aware of our passionate heart. So whether we're writing or not, we have those kernels of great writing within us. So I want you just to take a few moments and to explicitly feel and write, what do you have in this moment that supports and nourishes your writing life? And just take a few moments here.
And as you're writing, stay connected to your body. Allow yourself to be playful here too. Maybe some unexpected parts of you that help your writing. So some of you are maybe a little bit confused. So the question is just what qualities do you already have that make you set up to have a fulfilling writing life? Right in this moment, just a little celebration for how you are right now. And we'll spend just two more minutes here. And so now after we've done that from the present, now I invite you to take a few moments to set your intentions for what you hope for this coming year to have for your creative life and for your writing life. Let's take a few moments here. Could you repeat that question again? I'm sorry. Sure. So just write your intentions for what you hope for the coming year 
you'll have in your creative life and in your writing life. Try to stay focused in yourself, what, what you want, what your desires are. And if you don't know, that's okay. You know, just be curious about that. Oh, maybe I really don't know. Maybe it's just open. So take another moment here. And as you're thinking about your intentions for the future, stay connected to what you did in that first step, which is what qualities do you already have right now within you to make that happen. So it's rooted from the body. And take one more minute here. And now my next question for you is what might get in your way of meeting those intentions? So you have those seeds within you. And yes, if you could just mute yourself, I, I feel like I'm trying to mute people, but I'm hearing noises in the background. Um, so you have, you have those kernels within you, you have your intentions, but we all know things don't always go exactly according to plan. So what do you think might get in the way this year of meeting your intentions and try to stay within yourself because um, there are all kinds of external factors, right? That we can't control, but we also have the ability to work within whatever our situation is to create um, conditions that we, that we want for ourselves and, and to work with the situation that we find ourselves in. So everything, is kind of figure out a ball unless we in some way are are blocking our own energy. So try to stay with what's your what might get in your own way of meeting these intentions.
And take another moment here, another minute. And, and think about now that you know what might get in your way, how can you work with that? Because the more mindful we are about what blocks us, the more we can have strategies to work through that and not to do those patterns. We might even want to write that up for ourselves. Okay, here's the challenge. How am I going to work through that? So I see lots of great things in the chat and I'll come back to some of those things, but I wanna leave you in just another short meditation and give you one more writing exercise before responding to some of these things. So come back to your breath, let everything go. Come back to that mind-body connection. The mind wanders, bring it back to the breath. My invitation to you now is to write what it will feel like in a year if you meet your intentions. What will it feel like in your body? And remember what it feels like to have those kernels of qualities that lead to successful writing life, you know, whether it is just using language or noticing things around you. Just Stay in the feeling and write from the feeling of having met your intentions for yourself for the year. And again, try to connect to the feeling in your body because our patterns come from our body, the connection between the mind and the body. So you can come back to these questions later and continue writing into them. Um, they're helpful questions to return to at various times. 
And I just want to address a little bit of some of what I saw in the chat and talk a little bit about the kind of philosophy of the writing challenge practice and how that philosophy, how it works can help meet, help us meet our intentions and also get over a lot of the things that often get in the way. Because um, I th what I heard was a lot of people were talking about what got in the way was sometimes feeling like you need to find the perfect time for writing. So let me just tell you just a little bit about the practice that um, the meditation writing practice that I offer next week and also the kind of philosophy around it. So it's a short practice. It's only 15 minutes. And I, I used to feel that in order to have a writing session, I needed a lot of time and I needed to kind of clear my whole day and have all these kind of rituals and routines to get into writing. And what I realized was that that was kind of old habit energy and fear and um, also that I was kind of stuck in my monkey mind, right? So to get out of that analytical left brain into the creative flow took a long time. But when I started to bring my meditation and my writing practices together, I was able to break through those blocks much more quickly. And that's what most people experience. So that meditation, the reason we met it in, in the practice, and many of you have done it with me before, but even if you've done it with me or you're in my 31 day course, you have a lot of experience. I think it's helpful to go through the kind of philosophy of it again, so that we integrate our understanding of how to have more aligned writing wherever we are in our writing life. And this works not only for more aligned writing, but also for more aligned living. So what I do is I offer a meditation and then I offer um, a poem or a piece of short prose that I find really inspiring and then a writing prompt. And then I give supported writing time where I remind you to stay connected to your body. And so the philosophy behind that kind of practice is that when we bring the meditation, when we practice meditation before writing, we are stepping out of that analytical judgment, um, socially minded left brain, which is always in comparison mode. And we need that brain, we're social animals, but it's also a very egoic brain and it can get in our way. And it's not the brain, it's not the, not just brain, but the, the body of, of deep creativity. So by interrupting that old habit energy and sinking into meditation and connecting the mind and the body we set the conditions for deeper creativity deeper insight and a lot of those things imposter syndrome is this the right time i need perfect silence um, i'm going to be overly judgmental of myself i never finish anything all of those things can be reset by having a more mindful meditative practice first. And many of our stories also are stored in our body. They're not in our mind, but so often we're writing from the mind alone. So when we can do that meditation practice, we can write from a more integrated sense of self. And we go into the silence, that mystery, the darkness. But then as writers, you wanna come back out. So we, put some really inspiring writing there so we don't just come out to like the news or you know just our own monkey mind again i offer some inspiring writing and we get really interested in language and then i also offer six words to use and the reason i do that is because it makes a level of surprise and it stretches us because often we're using the same habits of mind the same images, the same language that we always use. So having this kind of new vocabulary that we need to use and making new connections between them actually makes us more creative and kind of is playful. It, it ignites that childhood self of wonder, of possibility. And then when I give you time to write, often it's only just 10 minutes in the practice but it has been so amazing to me to see how much deep, insightful writing people can do in a really short time with this practice. So if you set your intentions, you can use the practice to um, work on a piece of writing that you're already working on. So if you know one of your 
in, um, intentions for the year is to work on a longer piece or to finish something, you can use the practice to do that as well. Take the prompts and say, oh, in this scene, how can I use those words? And maybe something interesting will happen. Um, or you can use the practice to just generate completely new writing and go on a completely new journey. So some people said, oh, you hadn't written for a long time. Well, this will get you writing. And again, just all you need to do is sit down and hit play. So I think of practices like this as resets, as ways to retrain our whole system so that we have different habits so that we can write and live from a different part of ourself. Um, my son, as many of you know, had a accident this fall. Um, he was climbing and the rock broke and he, he fell, he broke his lung, uh, he broke his, not his lung, but he broke his ribs, four of his ribs and punctured his lung. And anyway, now he's back home and he's been going to a chiropractor and, you know, he fell and his body kind of tensed and it got misaligned and then kind of stuck in that place. And so the chiropractor realigns him and needs to go back a few times for readjustments so he can go back to his center. And that's what I think of many of these practices are a sense of realignment coming back to our natural creative flow so that we can meet our intentions. So um, I w just want to see what you are. Someone asked, could this work for songwriting? Absolutely. Absolutely, you can use this practice for songwriting. I have many um, people who have gone through with the practices and used it for painting as well, or other visual arts, or brought um, writing and visual arts together with this practice. So it's very um, beautiful way to set your intentions and to try something new and offer yourself new tools so working on what you already have but continuing to build them um so what i would love to do i see there are some questions um is just to open it up to you all to ask questions but also to if you want to share some of what came for you in the writing practice setting your intentions um and um to share share where you are in in your own writing life and what you're hoping for the future that would be wonderful so, um, Irina, I saw that you had a question. I also saw who else. Maybe if you can raise your Zoom hand, it's nice to see you, um, then I can call on you. And if you don't know how to raise your Zoom hand, um, I'll do my best to, you know, make a noise and I'll try to call on you that way. So, so nice to see you here, Irina. Hi, hi, Nadia. <laughs> nice to see you too. Um, I actually wanted to tell you, I had my first poems published this year since I was a student, and they were poems that I wrote in this in exactly these five day practices. So, That's um, so exciting. Exciting. Um, I have a question. It's kind of a doozy, but you don't have to, you know, answer it to to the end times, right? Um, you know, fear came up a lot when I was looking at the. Um, um, at the at the possible um, hurdles in the way of of the creative practice this year, but one of the things that's also come up a lot for me is I've been thinking about the blocks to writing, um, and I've been in kind of a sort of an unfortunate block period the past few months after a really great year. It's shame, actually. Shame comes up. You know, it's interesting. It tends to be hidden under under other emotions. Um, but I noticed that there's a lot of shame attached to trying new forms. There's shame attached to potential failure. There's shame attached to, you know, goals unmet in the past or things I, I felt I should have done already or I should have been further along on. Um, and, you know, I know that well the meditation works great works, but I wonder if there's anything you can offer, if you have any advice or thoughts or um, or guidance on that. Well, I think that, you know, shame likes to be in the dark. So saying it aloud is a really, really big, important step, you know, and that's the kind of like just asking the question, what is getting in my way? And then listening and seeing what comes up and naming it and writing with that, you know, let the shame guide you because shame is there usually for a reason. It has a history. It has a story. It has something it wants to teach us. And it also kind of wants to be transformed. So, you know, 
maybe you want to write into that. And also, um, you know, maybe just set yourself little, little practices. So you can practice something new, practice the failure, practice falling down, but you're not falling off the mountain, right? Like you're not doing it in the most public way. You're just stepping little by little into new territory. Because again, we want to change. We want to be healthy, but we also have a homeostasis, like the body falls, it's in misaligned, but then it gets stuck in that place because we're also scared of change. So um, going into that place where we can remember, you know, everything is always changing. There actually isn't um, anything is nothing is static. Even matter is is fluid. It's energetic. So the shame too, it's energetic. It can feel like it's a hard block, but to kind of find the the play in it. So I hope that's helpful. Um, I'm happy to talk more about that, but I thank you for, for naming that because I think for many people, shame is such a big block. And um, you know, there's so many women here and there's so, so much shame for women. So naming it, um, claiming it and um, sharing it helps to transform it. And writing is you know, part of that process. Um, Abbasma. First, thank you, Nadia, so much for organizing this workshop. Really, thank you so much. I'll be quick. My question is, I only, I'm only i only able to write when a certain idea or a thought or a situation touches me. Other than this, I'm, I'm not able to write. So this means I'm not writing that much, maybe like once every two, three months, one article. So how can I change this? So is it like one particular situation that you write from or just when you feel inspired, that's when you write, but often you're not. Inspired. So if, if a certain situation happens in front of me and it, it makes me think, oh, this should, should not have happened. So I, I go and write about it, whether it be something in the street or uh, in, in our firm, so be it. But if something really touches me and I have something to say about it, that's it. So is that a problem for you? Yeah, you because, to... because I want to write more, but I'm not able to. So uh, I cannot sit and say, okay, today I will write an article. I cannot do this. Is, yeah. is this wrong in itself? I'm not sure. Well, I'll just tell you, I really believe that we write because we're inspired to write and we can do practices to something happens maybe when you put your hand down, I can't see you anymore. So if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, I just lowered it for the sake okay, of others. Yeah, um, I didn't realize that was what was happening, but I'd <laughs> love to be able to see you as I'm talking. I think that happened to Arena too. Um, so I don't think like I, I got my PhD at Columbia and they had a writing program that was just based on rhetoric like they want people to write from rhetorical devices and I, I don't think that works I think you need to be invested in what you're writing about um, I think your body needs to care you know writing is it's time consuming it's hard if you don't really care why do it so I would say are there other things that actually you're interested in that maybe you're not allowing yourself to realize oh I would like to write about this too um because you have to write about something that that interests you maybe you've kind of attached to these particular kinds of things are what motivate you to write but you're probably talking to your friends about things right like that are interesting to you so you talk about them are there other parts of yourself that you, you could write from yeah okay thank you I'll be curious. So <laughs> follow through with me, everyone, on how sure. it goes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Carol. Okay. Am I, yeah, good. What I was saying is what you're trying to do is set up a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you say, look to the future and see yourself as a successful writer. And then knowing that you have that in your pocket, the rest will come easy. Is that what I should take from this? 
I don't necessarily know that it will come easy, but I think that if we would like to have something in the future, I mean, a lot of people have done work on this research, right? Like vision boarding even, we need to be able to imagine it for ourselves, and, and, and we need to imagine our body in that situation. So I started by saying, what do you have right now in the present that are qualities that are already there that are part that, you know, would lead to a successful writing life? And then how can you grow that to having those qualities in the future? and really feeling fulfilled. Because, you know, for many of us, it's actually like, oh, I want this, I want this, I want this. But when it really comes down to it, we can't really imagine ourselves there. And so there's a mental block. You know, we get connected to a story that we're telling about ourselves that I can't have this or to do this and fail is shameful or I only write from these circumstances so I don't have enough to write about or whatever it is. I'm, I'm using your examples and they might be wrong. So forgive me if I'm <laughs> misusing them. But so so that's kind of was my thinking behind today's today's series of prompts. Does that okay. answer your question? Uh, yeah, because I'm not I'm not looking to be an author. I'm not looking to be published. Mm -hmm. But I love when I get together with people and we write and we share what we write. And that's what makes me happy. Great. So just to give yourself that, to really know it and to just allow yourself to do what you love and to, to give yourself the, um, you know, more and more ways to participate in something that brings you joy. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I think John was next. Okay. I, sorry. And then Bunny, I'll come because I don't know if you, sometimes it can be anyway, but I'm going to just go to John quickly. Oh, hi. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, I know it's more, I, you were, when you asked like what was stopping us and for me, it's like, I, and you had mentioned it about finding the right time, the best time to write. And I mean, I, I, I'm hesitant to ask this because I know it's going to be different for every person and it's more of like a time management thing, but can you offer some tips or like offer maybe like, when do you write through the day? Like, what have you found works best for you? Well, you know, a lot of people like to write in the morning before their mind is, you know, full of all the other parts of the day, but, um, for a long time that just really didn't work in my schedule i had kids and i had to i'm not an early morning person um i wake up do a little meditation but i didn't really have time for real writing um for longer writing so you know i think it really depends on what works for you for your your schedule i think it's hard to say like I don't know if you have a very busy schedule that can sometimes be hard or a very empty schedule. Actually, sometimes having an empty schedule can be hard too, because then you're trying like, what's the perfect time. Um, yeah. So, so I would say, you know, use this practice, try it at different times of the day and be intentional and notice what works better for you. Some people do better when they get out of the house. Some people do better when they, I know a writer friend who actually writes in the closet because he doesn't like to have any windows around him. I know I like to write with a window around me. Um, so I would say, but having the question, what works for me? Because so often we're just kind of throwing things on the wall, but not really paying attention to what works um, and, and trying to be kind of systematic and finding what works for you. I hope that helps. All right. No, it does. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I bunny and then um so, sorry I think there's bunny with an o and bunny with a u um I'm going to just go to bunny with a u quickly and then I will come to you bunny with an o I apologize yeah hi um I, I was just thought of making a suggestion for the woman who was saying that shame was keeping her from writing and I was wondering if maybe she should write a poem about sh shame <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was part of my suggestion too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, and also, it's great. I'm really loving these conversations in the chat. So continue to talk to one another in the chat. Thank you, Bunny. Um, Silmadel, did I pronounce your name correctly? 
Yes, you did. I just wanted to say thank you so much. I was, you know, I, I really paid attention in my body and went through the questions really thoroughly. And I want to say that, you know, this has really brought intentionality to this year in a part that I had not thought about. This is interesting. I didn't think of putting writing into my yearly plan. So thank you so much for the clarity and thank you for bringing it forward in my mind because I would have lost a very important part of my life. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for saying that and for being here. I'm excited for the year ahead for you. Um, Mary. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah, hi there. Can you hear hi. me now? Yes. It took me a minute, sorry. Um, yes, so I just wondered, it's, it's about the chat actually, um, is, I, I find that kind of distracting. Um, I look to see if they're, cause I'm trying to focus on what I'm doing. And of course, when I look at the page, it's okay. But when I'm writing, but then when you're speaking and then there's that constant, you know, chat going on, I'm trying to ignore it. But, and I look to see if there was a way to turn it off, but I, is there a way to do that? Um, I think you can just kind of, click on the chat and it can disappear is that right um i don't know i pressed i pressed chat and it just showed me that uh then it just showed me the conversations i think um, as barbara's saying if you press on chat it will disappear so um and it will not open the chat so this is actually a great like little example of how how do we focus our attention and mm -hmm. things can distract us so it's great that you asked, you know, and then mm -hmm. in our writing life, we can be writing and then we're noticing, oh, things are distracting me. So both, how can we um, set the conditions so we're, you know, not being distracted, the phone isn't going off, all of those things, but also how can we be actually a little bit more resilient? Um, so coming back, so the practice of meditation um, I, I, I was with a teacher and someone said to the teacher, you know, I'm not a good meditator because my mind keeps on wandering. Mm -hmm. and, and then the meditation teacher said, well, yeah, but no, you don't understand. Everyone's mind keeps on wandering. The practice isn't to get your mind to stop wandering. The practice is to have your mind to come back. And I think that's really helpful for us as writers and as livers, but you know, like not to necessarily have the expectation that we are going to be um, fully concentrated, always aligned and always in our writing life, just the way we want it to be. We're gonna kind of fall off. The patterns are gonna get disrupted. We're gonna have the old blocks come back. We're gonna have, you know, all of the things that we have but then we're gonna come back to the practice. Oh yes, I have a better way of coming back into alignment. Even when I'm feeling frustrated, I get back to the writing. So it's a process as much of, you know, of coming back, of having tools to come back. And I think people talk about that with relationships also, right? Like in marriage, like you're gonna have fights, but can you resolve, can you come back into partnership? And you know, can you come back into partnership with your writing, even if you get distracted? So thank you for bringing up that technical question, but also that question of distraction, because I think that's a big, big issue for many of us with our writing. How do we come back um, when we've been pulled away? And thanks to the people in the chat, I was able to turn it off. So that was helpful. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nadia. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Okay, yes, thank you very much for today. And I just want to ask what's next? I don't know um, uh, the next steps that are, are coming up. So great. So um, if you've already signed up for the Mindful Writing Challenge, I will send some reminders out. Um, and then on Monday, I will send in the morning, I will send an email with a recording. Um, if you haven't signed up yet I will try to put that in the chat you'll have to copy and paste it I don't even know if you can do that but you can go to my website you can go to my emails and sign up from there um and I'll send out if you're watching the recording and you want to sign up I'll send it out in the link but um 
basically on Monday morning, I'll send an email with a link that will take you to a page where you can click and there'll be a recording. It's a 15 minute recording of the instructions for how to use it. And you basically sit down, hit play, and it will guide you through a practice. So just have some writing materials close by. And then each day for five days. So thank you for asking. So it's a five day writing challenge. And if you can practice every day, that's great because you're setting those new intentions. You're setting a new practice into place. But if you can't practice every day, I'm actually going to give you 10 days to have the free recordings. So if you need to skip a day or you can't start on Monday or you can't even start until the long weekend and you want to do it over the long weekend, you can do that because I know life is busy. And so I'm not um, a proponent of saying like everyone should have a daily writing practice. You should write every single day. I think people's lives are busy. Different seasons are different and you should find what works for you. But as you're putting this new practice in place, if you can do just 15 minutes a day for five days in a row, that's great. And if not, you know, do the five days over the 10 days. And if you've done all five days, then I will have, I mean, for everyone, I'll have an option to, I'm going to open up my right from your center course, which is, which is a meditation writing course with practices like in the free day challenge. And that will be on sale. Um, and so you can have lifetime access to this practice that you can do on your own schedule. And I'll tell you more about that later. But um, I think that's, I'll send out more emails, but I hope that answers your question for now. Hey, Nadia, this is Jane. I just want to hey, tell Jane. you, I put, hi, hi, Nadia. I put the link to the sign up in the chat. Thank you. <laughs> um, Nancy. Okay, I unmuted myself. Okay. Um, hi, I took your course sometime in the last couple of years. Anyway, you can do all kinds of stuff with this. I invented a totally new divination tool. Ooh. It's a scarf and you roll stones and I had I had to channel in how to define the stones. I work with crystals and cards and this stuff. And the other thing I invented is a heart chakra egg. This is all from writings that I was doing with you at the time about how to my how can I put my crystals in other people's hands that what I know about them so they can use them. I have a heart and a throat chakra and I have the other ones designed. I just don't have them yet. But anyway, uh, that's the world I work in in the world of woo and um, your course helps me connect to the part of me that I need to to be able to funnel that forward. Um, I now teach my gardening class twice a month and I have a bunch of people doing it all over the country and actually all over the world. So uh, when you start in the skies, you have no idea where it's going because I started off writing, oh, I'm not going to really do this probably and did it in a little date book. And when I look back at that little date book, I ended up scrunching all these things that became vitally important to me. So my bit, my other thing would be give yourself space because when you have to go back and read it, it's tough. <laughs> But anyway, I never had a real chance to thank you, Nadia, but thank you so much. Oh, thank and I, you. And thank you for sharing. I did that. suggest, uh, I have a little YouTube channel, but I did suggest to my people that they come over and try your stuff because they're always telling me, how can I connect to this and that? And I'm going, this is a way. It's, you know, it's, and people get scared when it's writing. I think they picture themselves in the fourth grade not doing their loops properly, but. Um, they're going to, you know, it, it's really, it's a totally different thing. And I really have enjoyed it. And I've obviously needed to meet you and needed to meet it. And it needed to come out. So it'll, it'll all show up, guys. I promise you. I love that. And it's really a process of deep listening, you know, mm -hmm. like that you, that, that it emerges for you in the form that you're working in. Mm hmm and it can take different forms. It can take these tangible forms. It can take Oracle cards, right? It can, it comes through you. It's a process that comes through you and that continues to develop. And so they're setting the intention, but also letting it be a process of discovery. We don't know where we're going to go. And right. staying grounded in the listening and in the body to see where, where the path takes us. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. To connect with you. Hi, Jack. Nice to see you here. Yeah. 
Yeah, hi. Uh, my uh, the issue I want to bring up is about that I've discovered in myself is that the lens that I see my work at uh, through, that I see my work through, and sometimes I notice there is that critical lens where almost uh, there's, I think it's kind of, it's, it's ancient. Probably goes back to grade school where I start to criticize or belittle is actually the word, you know, some of my work. And this is, and so the question is like how to deal with that. Also, I've identified that it's much different from the other part of me, which is generally wants to improve my work. And as I go through a second or third time, I, I see things that I'd like to change. And that has just a totally different feel to it. Mm. So, uh, but the sort of question is what to do about that, that ancient uh, reactive critical lens that I sometimes bring with me. Yeah, well, I love that you distinguish between those two because sometimes people can feel that if I get rid of my critical self, I won't improve. But you're saying they're different, actually. Oh, yeah. There's the, the yeah. desire to improve, to revise, to keep working. It's very healthy. And then there's this critical self that kind of wants to shut down instead of to expand. And so I think that you can distinguish those two is really helpful. And, you know, I think to some extent, we all have habit energy. We've all been conditioned. And, you know, as you said, as I think Carol said, um, you know, in fourth grade, how are we made to write? We have a lot of habit energy around writing and there's a lot of cultural baggage around writing. Um, there's a whole hierarchical history around writing. Um, and so we're kind of carrying that residually intergenerationally. And so I think just having the compassion to say, oh, I see it, I understand why it's here. I'm trying to transform it. It's not just an individual process of transformation. It's a cultural process of transformation because it's a collective old energy. And we might not be able to transform it 100% in this lifetime, but just to be as compassionate and gentle with ourselves, and kind of not take it too seriously and understand, I know why it's here and I'm doing the best I can. So I hope that's helpful. <laughs> and these practices, of course, are designed to help in that process of transformation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we're gonna have time, it's one o'clock. Um, I just wanna say, I'll, I'll continue to stick around for more questions. But um, I will just want to say thank you, everyone who is here, who is watching. Um, and I'm just so excited to be connected to you, to be supporting your writing and, and connected to what so many people have said and, and Jack's comment that this practice that we're, we're doing together is actually a very radical practice. And it's radical, it's getting to the roots of who we are, our creative energy, it's shifting. Um, old habit energy, and it's radical in a cultural sense too, because it is reclaiming creative energy, reclaiming the possibility of approaching our own creativity, our own language, our own stories, our own voice differently um, in a more holistic way. So uh, this is important work. Um, and so thank you for being here. And um, I'm just excited to, to see as it transforms where, where we all go together. Um, Rhett, nice to see you here. Hey, um, I actually put this in the chat because I have to leave in a minute, and but you got to me. So um, I don't know, I think you've maybe already answered this. Actually, I think all of your answers have maybe spoken to this and I just need to think about it a little more, but um, like, I um, I lately, like over the past year or so or two, feel myself very distracted by the um, amount of different projects I'm working on in a bunch of different genres and they all pull at me equally. Like I want to do them all equally. And I try to just sort of like listen to the moment and do the one I feel most drawn to in the moment. But as a result, I feel very, I feel very scattered among them a little bit, my attention very scattered among them. 
And the same thing's happening in my reading. Um, used to be a read one novel and then finish it before you start the next one. And I'm reading like five things and I'm being very judgmenty about that. And like, I feel like that's wrong and I shouldn't be doing that. And that's probably where the problem is, is my judgment and not the thing itself. But I don't know. I just wondered if you could speak to that for a second. Well, it sounds a little bit like it's not just your judgment because it sounds like it's not working so well for you. Am I wrong? Or are you comfortable with it and it's just your judgment? I mean, I think that's the question for you. Yeah. You know, and, and I think another thing about this practice, it's about taking these 15 minutes and, and, and focusing and meditation can help us focus. Mm -hmm. So um, we live in such a distracted age, right? There's just so much available all the time. And our mind is really different now. Like just the, the internet is just completely new to human existence that we can have all, all this information happening uh, on my computer screen. I can have multiple things up at once, right? Um, I don't at the moment, <laughs> don't worry. But, um, but so I think the question is, is it working for you or is it not working for you? That's the first thing, like what actually feels good in your body? Right. Not like what should work, mm -hmm. but what, what feels good. Mm -hmm. And then to set those conditions and, and sometimes saying, you know, this is when I'm working on this and this is when I'm working on this mm -hmm. and have some boundaries. Because again, with so much happening, we're losing boundaries. We're losing presence. So creating those for yourself and it doesn't need to be, I like this project the most and this project, you know, the least, but for my own sanity, not sanity, but for my own well being, I find it works better for me to concentrate on something more, you know, one at a time. But again, maybe that's not, maybe it's energizing you. You don't need to do it one at a time. Right. You know, so I really, would say be mindful of what it feels like in your body and mm -hmm. then set the conditions that will make you feel good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. I know that's not such a help, but I mean no, there is. isn't a right answer. There it, isn't a right I mean, answer. It helps but, me like direct my thoughts to it in a in a good way, I think. Yeah. So. But for me personally, I find I am more settled in my body when I do a little bit less mm -hmm. at a time. Mm -hmm. I like that focus of attention. It doesn't need to be one thing, you know, a little, you know, a little shake it up a little bit is nice. Yeah. But if it's too many things, I feel overloaded. And, you know, it's just like, how much can we hold at once? It's asking a lot of ourselves. And the human brain is already just dealing with so much more than we have ever dealt with ever as a species before. So, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> Lorraine. Wonderful. I just had to be here while it was live. It's a very different thing than to just hear your voice. So um, I did the 31 day exercise last year, just letting whatever came come. But I am curious about how to use the practice for a project that I've been working on since 2018. And my, um, I'm trying to figure out how to focus in a good question that might help, you know, help because um, a lot of stuff is in it. <clears throat> I would say I'm a person who connects everything together. So the last person, Rhett, who spoke about many, many things happening at the same time. I do advocacy work. I can't wait to be retired so I can finally do my art. I did a music degree. So the project I'm on uh, right now is a retelling of uh, Rangel and uh, Gawain and the Lady Rangel, but all from the point of view of Rangel. And I'm imagining it, and I imagined it in its fullness in 2018 as a performance, storytelling, singing, art, cost. I, I drew all the costumes and everything. And um, I have a poet sister who says, why do you think so big, you know? Like, it doesn't need to be this huge performance, right? So basically I have the bones down of the story I am the four characters. The four characters are me and they are facets of myself. And I've, I really have found that, that it's her, her voice speaking through and she leads the, the narrative. But there are songs in it. There's a story in it. I'm doing watercolor paintings. I, 
my fantasy would be to have a book like one of those fabulous huge books mm. as beautiful as the lost words if you've ever found that one you know and yet I'm not a professional painter I'm exploring it and so I I appreciated hearing you say you could use it in different forms of art um but so I think the big, if, yeah so if I can maybe down, just, yeah. the biggest I, challenge is how do you how do you figure out how to move forward and so not that's, feel guilty. That's similar to Red's question in some ways, right? It's one project, but it's multifaceted. And um, I do think that sometimes, in, you know, for people who are so creative, it can be helpful to have some structure and some boundaries. So, you know, you could use the 31 day course and go through it again. And do you have a kind of structure for the book? Do you, you kind of know? It sounds like you you had a vision of the whole, do you kind of have an outline what comes when? Well, originally I had it chronologically, like the story was first written. And then just, I think last week, what came to me was why not take a musical form? So sonata form where you, you lay the thing out, you develop it and you come back to it. And then I've been reading, you know, why not oh, use music yeah. form to create the storyline? And then it doesn't have to be chronological. I don't know. So actually, I have some recommendations about that, which is that um, for people, again, like you, you have so many ideas and there are so many different ways to put it together. I would recommend writing it first chronologically. And then you can weave it together, because if you're trying to create the wool and weave it at the same time, that's very difficult. So first you create the wool and then you can weave it together. So create the okay. pieces. I have 60 pages, okay? And there are too many. And then there's songs. And then, so, okay, now I have this thing. What do I do with it? Ah, so maybe that I didn't understand. So, um, and are you trying to know how you can use the 30 way, one day challenge to work with it or just in general? Mm, how do you sift? How do you choose? How do you let go of the babies you fell in love with and you think they're absolutely essential? How do you choose? Right, okay, so so then you gotta go back to the big picture and, and you gotta go into the energy of it, right? You have a dance performance. It can only, you can only have the audience's attention for so long. They're sitting in their seats and they need an intermission at a certain point and they're not up there dancing. So what's the movement? Get into the flow, the energy. Not like, I love this piece, I love this piece, I love this piece, but what's the overall movement and energy? And then call the pieces that don't work and you're so lucky, you, have, you can use them somewhere else maybe, or pieces of them somewhere else. But I would say, look for that big picture and look for the energy and keep moving. Because I know sometimes I can think, oh, my piece is working great. I read the little piece, parts of it, but I read it all together and it's just like, it's too long. It needs to go faster. So, so I hope that's helpful. Let, let, <laughs> good luck. Marge. Hello, this is great. I'm really enjoying this. It just popped into my Facebook inbox today and I thought I'm gonna go for this. Awesome. I, have, I as I said, mm -hmm. Previously, I live in Scotland. I'm American from Merrick, Long Island. I've lived here for a long, long time. And, and uh, my story, my life has been, my writing life has been guided by this one thing that happened to me when I was 11 years old, when Mr. Brundage in my sixth grade class was reading out something that I had written uh, when I came in from the girls' room. So. I've been told since I was 11 that I could write and I could write well. And over the years, I have, I've had things published, articles and uh, columns and uh, you know, funny things and um, um, bits of memoir, but that's never been a, I mean, yes, I've been very satisfied and happy about that. My career was in social work, which isn't exactly barrel laughs, although we have some black humor. Um, but I've never, my point, I guess, is that those milestones that anybody else would have been thrilled with were never enough to really get me on a trajectory to keep going. And the thing that attracts me about your 
approach is that I'm, I'm a mindfulness teacher with the Mindfulness Association in Scotland. And I've never really thought about combining the, the writing process with my mindfulness practice. So I'm, I'm going to be with you next week and I hope I can stick to it because my thing is I start things and I don't finish. So again, knowing our patterns and just getting curious, why is that there? And then giving yourself, you know, maybe this intention not to have a daily practice, because if for someone who you start things, you don't finish them, that's a really hard thing to keep up. So do the five days, do it daily if you can, but then if you want to continue, do it twice a week and 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 build it so that you're looking forward to it because a lot of people do this not because they feel like i need to do this but because it makes them feel good so find that place of enjoyment to doing it from that place of well-being and that will motivate you i hope thank you so nice to connect with you i'm gonna have just take two more questions and then um we'll close but i want to tell you i'm going to lead another session at the end of the long weekend so towards the end of the five day mindful challenge on on tuesday not this coming tuesday but the following tuesday to kind of come together and see how has it been and also as you're going through the challenge there's a facebook group that's open to everybody and i will be there so you can ask questions in the facebook group and connect with other people in the facebook group and um and i'll be there supporting you there as well so um, so Melissa and then Nata and, um, and then I'm so looking forward to staying connected. Thanks very much. Um, so first of all, thank you for the beginning of the practice with writing down what you already have in place going for you. That's positive. Um, I personally don't do that enough. And then when I do that, I'm like, oh, you do have a lot of the pieces already put together. I wondered if you had any suggestions for, um, you know, the small little practices often bring up bits of different ideas for future works. Do you have any suggestions or ideas for organizing those in a way that you can then access them um, as you want to go back and then dig deeper into something else? Yeah, that's a good question. In some ways, it's related to some of the other questions, but kind mm -hmm. of just like, how do you manage all of your writing? Right. It's very prolific. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I like Google Documents, um, and I like folders within documents. And um, sometimes, you know, I like to put things chronologically because I have a general sense of where things are. At the same time, I have to tell you, I came across all these poems that um, I had written that I was like, I actually really like these poems. I'm going to incorporate some of them into a later book. Um, and I had kind of forgotten about them, to be honest. So um, there is that sense of wanting to keep them all in place. And then there's also the kind of wonderful surprise of coming upon them <laughs> later. Um, it depends on if you're working on a like really um, systematic project where it's really helpful to have it organized. I know a lot of people use Scrivener. Um, Scrivener, I think it's called actually, um, which helps you organize. It's a software. It's not very expensive. I don't really have the, I don't really quite know how to use that, but people who do use it think it's helpful to kind of categorize things. You can categorize different writings with different tags and then find them that way. Uh -huh. So that might be something you want. Too. So you do you do everything on your computer? Do you write on your? I write by longhand mostly, and so I constantly find things that I wrote yeah. you know a long time ago. So kind of finished yeah. writing, I'll always put on my computer. Okay, personally, mm -hmm. but but then I have old notebooks that you can know. You just like I have the notebooks year by year, and then I can you can also kind of flip through them. But okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Nata. Hi. Hi, Nadia. I have a question. I feel that uh, my creativity is limited by what I know. Like my experience, like it, it's great. I had lots of experiences and that could be a book on its own. But then it, it, I feel I cannot just let go and, oh. and imagine and just and just go. I wouldn't be able to write a fairy tale. It's because it's not grounded in my experience. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, 
So how can I unleash? How can I just let go of, of that? How do I? Well, I'm not sure you're asking the right person <laughs> because I was once teaching a class and, you know, someone said, how can I write a book about the slums in India? I've never been there. I said, I don't know, actually. I don't, I don't know that you can write a book about that if you've never really been there. I mean, you can write a fantasy world because no one's been there. Um, but they cannot. But that's the, that's our, the thing. But even I, our fantasy books mm -hmm. are related to our experiences. Like if you put, even if you say, oh, they don't eat, they do something else. They, they are nourished by the air. But like we have only the vocabulary of our body and other experiences. So we're always, whatever fantasy we're creating or fairy tale, it's rooted in our experiences. The experience mm -hmm. of the Wicked Witch, like, that's an emotional experience that we've had. And it's also an experience we've had of reading other stories. Mm -hmm. But I personally don't write fiction and don't write um, I understand. fantasy. And I think that's okay. You mm -hmm. know, so if you're just longing to write that, then, mm -hmm. then allow yourself, you know, going back to Irina's first question, like, allow yourself to just fall down on your face a little bit and try different things and fail for a while until you kind of find your way in. But if you're not longing to write it, there are plenty of writers who just write from their experience, and that's also perfectly wonderful. You know, there's a lot of creativity, there's a lot of imagination in going back and reclaiming our experiences or writing a poem from just looking at a flower. Um, that quality of attention is itself a creative mm -hmm. quality. Mm -hmm. So I would say again, you know, I think this has come up in a lot of the questions, you know, what's right for you? Do you want to do something because you want to do it or because you have the idea that someone else is saying you should do it? And then I, listening into your body. I just observed an artist once, uh, I took a photo class on Photoshop and we had an assignment and my assignment was based on my experience, my photos, whatever, I made a collage and he went, he just went. And he created something like so simple, but just out of, and I don't have this ability and I feel it's limiting. But everyone, but he probably, he might've come back from that class and said, well, I did this thing, but Nata, she did this other thing that I just can't do. Okay, yeah, I see. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll right. think about it, thank you. Because everyone has a different voice mm -hmm. and everyone has a different style. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to stretch ourselves and try new things. But at the end of the day, we're always going to be ourselves, And to come back to that and appreciate it. There's no one else that's exactly like you. I see what you mean. Thank and you. And it's a beautiful thing to be you and to do what comes naturally to you and enjoy it. And not to feel like you have to be entirely different. I hear you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Thank you. Thank appreciate you it. so much. You. That's really a beautiful way to... Um, I hope you don't mind, uh, Marianne. It's really nice to see you here, but I'm just going to close the questions and we'll have other times um, for questions. And if anyone has a really urgent question, email me, um, come over to the Facebook group and ask them. But I think that's actually a beautiful way to close because um, here we are, each of us, with our unique bodies in the unique chair that we're sitting on, in the unique place that we're sitting, the unique moment in our lives with our unique experiences that no one else has had. And all we can do is be ourselves and to appreciate that. And again, I think it's related to Jack's question or noticing the difference between, I want to be myself more fully. I want to continue to grow and expand, but I don't need this energy of judgment. There's something wrong with me. And we all have that. We all have it. I mean, this conversation loops back to the first question of this element of shame that we've all inherited. It's a cultural inheritance. It's an intergenerational inheritance. But then to let ourselves be here, here I am. What wants to come through me? How can I open up so it emerges and just keep opening? And you know, maybe I didn't like what came so much this morning, but tomorrow something new will come and just keep on, keep on showing up. So 
Thank you all so very much for being here. I'm so excited to continue to work with you um, to support your writing for 2023 and to make, you know, this the year that you feel more aligned with yourself, with your creative voice and for showing up for what you believe in, um, in the world and in yourself and in your life. So um, I'll send out a recording and I'll send out everything you need to practice next week in the writing challenge. Um, I'll be there to answer questions and mostly have a good time with it. Just try to allow yourself to relax and see what emerges and let it be a process of discovery. So thank you all so much again. I will bang the singing bowl one more time. Thank you, Nadia. You're welcome. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you, Nadia. Have a wonderful day. Gracias. I look forward to being with you again. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Yeah. bye everyone. Thank you. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. Yeah.